Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today is going to be a bit of a product focused episode of Tech Tips. We are going to be having a close and in depth look at the BenQ XL2410T. This is a pretty unique LCD on the market in that it has a feature list that is about as long as a Thanksgiving shopping list. So it has pretty much everything that you'd look for in a monitor and it comes at a very attractive price. Now, this is a gaming oriented SKU. So let's talk about the first thing and in my mind first and foremost thing that makes it gaming oriented and that is that this is a 120 hertz display. So 120 hertz has a couple benefits as well as a couple limitations. So first of all you are going to need to use a dual link capable graphics card. Now if you're using any modern gaming card from about I believe uh, even some 6800 GTs were dual link capable, okay? So going back that far. So if you're using any kind of decent gaming card, you should have dual link DVI. You also need a dual link DVI cable, which means it has the full complement of pins inside the cable as opposed to only half of them in a single link DVI cable. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys what happens if you try and set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 this is an HD full HD 1080p monitor and if you try to set it to 120 Hertz without a dual link cable this is more just for entertainment value than anything else but here is what happens I accidentally did this it looks like the monitor gives us a nice little error message incorrect cable please use the dual link DVI cable that came with your monitor and check out what happens to all of our text now it is running at 120 Hertz right now but as you can see the display is uh, completely broken so give me a moment I'll swap the cables and then I'll talk a little bit more about 120 Hertz so all I had to do was swap the cable. Now our text is crisp and clear. And here is the first benefit that I personally notice when I sit down in front of a 120 hertz monitor. And it's gonna be really hard to demonstrate this given that we're shooting at 24 FPS or whatever it is that we're shooting at with that camera. But when you're using a 120 hertz monitor versus a regular 60 hertz LCD you are going to notice much more crispness in the overall motion of everything on the screen now you'll hear people talking endlessly about how many FPS the eye can perceive but I can tell you personally and from everyone I've talked to who sat in front of a 120 hertz display versus a 60 hertz LCD display that it is a very perceivable difference even with something as simple as minimizing and maximizing a window it looks smoother it looks sharper dragging a window around it feels more responsive because remember if you start an input to the computer at exactly the the beginning of displaying a frame there is going to be a 1 60th of a second lag between you moving your mouse and anything actually moving on the screen you can not feel it normally but as soon as you replace that and you make it so that the absolute maximum possible lag is only half that period of time you are all of a sudden going to say oh wow this is so responsive compared to 60 hertz now yeah so what you're gonna buy a 120 hertz monitor so that you can drag windows around on your desktop really responsively no this skew is all about gaming so you can actually see they've got a couple pictures of as far as I can tell a couple famous gamers uh, he on and spawn I think are their uh, are their gaming handles and um, 120 Hertz is far more important for gaming than it is for anything else so not only does it give you that extra little bit of responsiveness remember this is a very very quick response time panel because in order to operate at proper 120 Hertz uh, frequency it's going to have to respond very quickly in terms of the pixel response times as well but it also gives you a much smoother gaming experience just like dragging those windows around when you're looking around in a game you're going to be far less susceptible to tearing at high FPS rates and you are also going to get that quicker response to movement on the screen so this LCD also has very low input lag which is another gaming oriented feature and I will show you guys the non gaming feature features in just a moment. So let's talk non-gaming oriented features. The first thing that I noticed about this LCD, and I did mention this in my unboxing video, is that honestly the stand isn't the most robust. It's a plastic stand, 
Um, it's not really, you know, a, a great piece for your fancy office with your mahogany desk and all that kind of stuff. This is a functionality piece. So you've got all of the features you want, but I would go as far as to say that the uh, industrial design is not quite up there with something that you'd, you'd put on a, on a $4,000 desk, okay? So let's just be upfront about that, done. But you've got features like pivot, okay? You have swivel. You have tilt, you have height adjust, which is huge. I cannot stress enough how important height adjust is to me personally. I use my height adjustable monitor at home. I use it from time to time, depending on whether I want to slouch in my seat or whatever I want to do. I might height adjust and use the tilt in order to get a better viewing angle. And I also use it at work, or I have little monitor stands, as you guys have probably seen in my office, in some of my unboxings. So it's got all of those different adjustments. I mean, Pivot's a cool one too, because if you wanted to buy three of these and game at 120 hertz, so nice smooth gaming experience, in with triple portrait mode, you could do that using NVIDIA Surround. Okay, we've also got an HDMI input, which I mentioned in my unboxing, 1080p, 120Hz, I've mentioned those as well, and this is one that I'm really happy to see too, matte finish. I am not a big fan of glossy screens. It can make the images look a little bit brighter, but instead of, or in, uh, rather brighter, more vibrant, but instead of taking that approach to get a more vibrant image out of this panel, BenQ has also implemented LED backlight technology. So it makes it fairly slim, although it's not by any stretch of the imagination the slimmest LCD monitor out there, but it also gives it a very even backlight as well as great overall vibrant to the colors. So they've included pretty much every feature that you could want on a marketing tick box list except for one. And I'm going to explain why they haven't done that. Now this does not use a VA or an IPS panel. And the reason for that is that VA and IPS panels, while they do offer better color reproduction, are not really optimal for elite gaming because they don't have the pixel response times that are able to match up with a 120 hertz refresh rate. So for a gaming scenario, that is not an ideal option. So they've included everything in here that does make sense. Three, two, one. So I'm playing some Battlefield Bad Company 2 and I want to demonstrate why this is a perfect example of a game that will benefit from a 120 hertz display. Now the reason for that is you can see right now my frame rate is in the is in the pretty much 60 FPS or so range. You can see that up here in the top. Now see that right there. So it popped up a little above 60 FPS. Now what happens when your frame rate goes above the refresh rate of your monitor is that the game is actually, the video card is drawing more frames than your monitor can display. So what happens is sometimes in the middle of a screen refresh rate, in the middle of a screen refresh, the video card actually will be drawing a slightly different image. So you see what's called tearing, where you might see a line down the middle of the screen where on the top, the guy's body is kind of here and on the bottom, the guy's you know, legs are kind of here and it's not quite synced up, not quite right. So what a 120 hertz refresh rate allows you to do, in, I mean in this case, I'm running at 1080p, I have the details absolutely maxed on my uh, GTS 560, uh, uh, GTX 560 Ti, so there's no way I can turn up the details higher in order to get a lower FPS, but by having a higher frequency, higher refresh rate monitor, I'm able to properly enjoy the game with no tearing, regardless of how high my frame rate goes, and I don't have to turn on VSync, which in my perception anyway, causes the game engines to sometimes feel a little bit, um, a little bit less responsive, a little bit laggier. I personally hate playing with VSync on and very much prefer to just have a higher overall refresh rate. So this is a great example of when that would be useful. Another example of when it would be useful is if you want to play in 3D. So this is a 3D Vision certified monitor. It is fully compatible with that. So remember, not all 120 hertz displays, be they TVs, projectors, LCDs, are necessarily certified to work with NVIDIA 3D Vision, but this particular one is, and you can actually tell 
from the little badge that's not on the front of the box for whatever reason, but is actually up here. So this is a 3D vision ready monitor. So thank you for checking out our episode on the BenQ XL 2410T. And I hope you found something informative about this particular little episode. And don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips. After watching this, what are your thoughts on 120 Hertz displays? So whether you want 3D or not, would you consider a 120 Hertz display knowing what you know now?